I'm Dr. Erin Unger. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists at South Denver Cardiology here in Littleton. And I'm excited to talk to you today about Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. So to begin, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is also known as something called stress cardiomyopathy, or you may have heard of it as broken heart syndrome. And it's a special type of heart weakness that presents to the hospital with chest pain most commonly, and is defined in a very characteristic way. So stress cardiomyopathy happens when the heart is under an unusual form of stress. And we don't exactly understand how that impacts the heart cells themselves, but what happens is part of the heart becomes weak, and another part of the heart tries to compensate becoming extra strong. And the way that that is defined is something that actually looks like Takotsubo, which is the Japanese word for octopus pot, that defines how your heart looks during this syndrome. So like I mentioned before, this is also known as broken heart syndrome. And that's because in some patients, the trigger for them developing this is a very stressful event in their life, like having a broken heart. And it also leads to weakness of the heart, which is referred to as a broken heart. So it's a very perfect name for this syndrome. But we don't understand exactly why that happens in some people and not others, but we know that it's likely an exaggerated stress response. In some people that can be physical stress and in others it can be emotional stress. So who gets this? In this country, it's most common in women who've gone through menopause. That's not the same all around the world. In fact, where this was first recognized in Japan, it's much more common in men. But for whatever reason in this country, it's more common in women who make up the vast majority of these cases, and most of them have already gone through menopause. So the most common symptoms that people develop when they have Takotsubo is chest discomfort or trouble breathing. Sometimes they can also feel lightheaded or dizzy or have palpitations. Oftentimes that's accompanied with a stressful event in their life, but not always. And people may not recognize the stressful event until hindsight later in the situation. So if you ever develop those symptoms like severe chest discomfort, pressure, tightness, or anything that's associated with trouble breathing, feeling like you're gonna pass out, or severe palpitations, you need to talk to your cardiologist right away. And if those symptoms are very severe, you need to go to the emergency room. If you come into the hospital with those symptoms that we talked about, like chest pain, trouble breathing, lightheadedness, or palpitations, Sometimes your EKG or your electrocardiogram can show a pattern that's concerning for Takotsubo. The interesting thing is that pattern on the EKG can also sometimes represent a heart attack. So oftentimes these patients are taken for a procedure called a coronary angiogram or a heart catheterization to look at the heart arteries and see if there are any significant blockages. If there are not blockages that are significant and causing the EKG to be abnormal, then we recommend further testing, either during the angiogram or with an echocardiogram or ultrasound of the heart that can diagnose Takotsubo. So even though Takotsubo cardiomyopathy can sometimes be confused for a heart attack when you're in the emergency room because of the EKG abnormalities, when you are have the procedure to look at the heart arteries themselves, they're actually okay. It's not caused by heart artery blockage. It's caused by abnormal stress hormones and the impact that that has on the heart muscle itself. So it's not due to poor blood flow in a common way that a heart attack would be. It's another type of stressor on the heart. As far as treatment, it depends on how sick you are when you come into the hospital with this. Some people can have some chest discomfort and be overall okay, and they get treated with pills. Some people's heart can be under a lot more stress and they can be much more sick from this, in which case they sometimes require staying in the hospital for medications through the IV to help support their heart. But most of the people that get this have the milder form of it and are able to be treated with medications orally. In which case we treat you with several different medicines that are designed to strengthen the heart over time. 
The good news is in the vast majority of patients, this improves their heart muscle and their heart function rapidly over the course of weeks to months. Now, because you'll be treated with multiple medications to help strengthen the heart over time, it's important that you follow closely with cardiology after you leave the hospital so that we can monitor your response to the medications and check and make sure that your heart has strengthened as we would expect it to do over time. Now some people ask about if this can come back, and it can in some people. In the studies are a little bit variable, but they show in about 10 to 20% of people they can have a recurrence or a repeat episode of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or stress cardiomyopathy when their heart's under stress again. And so that can be scary for some people, but together with medications and some stress management techniques that your cardiologist can go over with you, that helps to minimize the risk. So risk factors for Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or stress cardiomyopathy are unfortunately being a woman puts you at risk for um, being more likely to have this. In most people, they can identify a very stressful event that has happened in their life that seems to bring this on. So anything you can do to help manage your stress, whether that's a heart healthy diet, frequent exercise, whatever meditation or therapy that you use to manage your stress, those are all great things that can potentially lower your risk of developing this. Obviously things like not smoking, not drinking too much, and staying active are generally heart healthy things that you should be doing and may ultimately be protective in the long run for this as well. Some patients when they get this diagnosis ask me how quickly they're able to get back to doing the things they love to do, like exercising and being active with their families. And the answer is it depends a little bit on how serious the Takotsubo is for you and how your body response to medications. But for most people, they're able to get back to doing all the activities that they love. For some, enrolling in cardiac rehab where you have monitored exercise to get you back into the swing of things, feeling active, and being in a monitored setting where doctors are around if you ever had any symptoms can be very helpful to get you back on your feet. The good news is that even if you are diagnosed with Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, most patients go on to live a very healthy, normal life afterwards. As long as they see their cardiologist regularly, sometimes take some medications to make their heart stronger, and live a heart healthy life, which includes diet and exercise. So to summarize, if you develop chest discomfort, chest pressure, or tightness, that either comes on suddenly and won't go away or limits your ability to do the things that you normally do, like exercising, walking upstairs, doing housework, etc. then you really need to get evaluated by a cardiologist or be seen in an emergency room. Here at South Denver Cardiology, we have a whole span of cardiologists that are able to see you for whatever heart problem possibly comes up.